teaching us, has given us understanding and wisdom today on the subject that you've given us this series on the goodness of God. And today we want to talk about blessings, Lord. We've already talked about good news. We already talked about about benefits. But today the subject is blessings. So we ask you to bless us, God. Watch over us and keep us in Jesus' name as we go into our study. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, saints, as we talk about blessings this morning, you know, we're talking about benediction because remember something. When you have a benediction in the church, that benediction is a blessing. The benediction is a blessing. Okay, we talk about benefits, and we also talk about hope. For results, hope for results. Now, I want to give you a sample blessing. Here's a sample blessing. You'll find me in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to verse 26. And Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. It said, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Saints, that is the benediction that many times is said over the body of Christ as they're about to, to leave the sanctuary. Now, mm-hmm. I want you to realize something within that blessing in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. It's a blessing. A blessing is a hopeful prayer. A blessing, mm-hmm. okay, is a hopeful prayer. Watch this. I want you to realize that the blessing was one way of asking God's divine favor to rest upon others and to rest upon the body of Christ or to rest upon your people or your family. Watch this. Mm -hmm. And see, this is what they call an ancient blessing. Ancient blessing. Why? Because they did it a long time ago. It's old. It's been around a long time. But just because it's old don't mean it still don't work. Amen? Because the blessings of the Lord will make you rich and add no sorrow to you. So you have to realize something. That today our subject is blessing. Blessing. We're in our series, The Goodness of God. We talked about good news. We talked about benefits. And today is blessing. So number 20, Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 and 26. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 and 26. Let me read it again. May the Lord bless you and protect you. That's one. May the Lord smile on you. That's two. May the Lord be gracious to you. That's three. Watch this. May the Lord show you favor. That's four. And give you peace. That's five. I want you to realize something. It's five major things that are involved in that Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. That's a sample of a blessing before you this morning. Now, you want to write that down. You want to make sure you look that over because, saints, I'm telling you, this is what you say. This is what the pastor says over the people. This is what you can say over your children, your family. You understand? Because this is a blessing. Now, and what is a blessing? A blessing is a hopeful prayer. A hopeful prayer. That's what it is. Amen. And when you, this ancient blessing that we're talking about here, we understand what blessing is supposed to do. Okay? Because I'm breaking down what a blessing is supposed to do. Let me teach. It's a five-part conveyed hope that God would bless you. That God would bless you. Number one, that God would bless and protect you. I'm from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. That God would bless and protect you. That God would make his face shine upon you, that smile upon you. That God would be gracious. That he would turn his face towards you. That means show you favor. When God turns his face yeah. towards you, he's showing you favor. And number five was give you peace. When you ask God to bless others, you also get the blessing yourself. Yeah. So you gotta ask when you ask when you when you say you're blessing somebody, are you asking him to do these five things? Absolutely, positively, you are. Because a blessing are demonstrations. Now you might say, well, Pastor, how are you connecting a blessing to a demonstration? Well, the blessing that I'm offering won't just help me, it'll also help you and the person, whoever's in line to receive this blessing. And it's going to demonstrate the love of God. 
God in you. Pay attention. It's going to demonstrate the love. It's going to demonstrate encouragement to others. It's going to demonstrate and provide a mom of caring for others. So whenever you put a blessing on somebody, you're giving a demonstration. A demonstration of the love of God, of encouragement. And you're providing a model of caring for people that are watching you. Are you beginning to understand a blessing a little bit more now? Okay, it's more than just words. You understand? And that is very, very important to understand what the blessing is. That's why I gave you a sample blessing over here in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. Okay, now let's keep it moving. I'm in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Okay. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Chapter and verse, Ephesians 3, 17. I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your heart as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. Now listen to me closely. I'm talking about your roots need to be in love. See, that's why you get blessed. That's why you get blessed. Because you're rooted in love. You see what I'm saying? Listen. If you ain't rooted in love, you ain't rooted in Christ. How you gonna bless somebody? Amen. Oh, you listen to me. See, when Amen. I said that, that hit you because that don't even make sense. Amen. Amen. You understand? Know, all the blessed. When you bless somebody, hey, listen, it's because your roots go deep down in Christ. Amen. Now, the family of God includes. Listen, the, listen. When you talk about uh, Christian growth, Christian growth is a blessing. Now, the way this man is growing, it is a blessing. It is a blessing. You understand? That's God showing you favor. All right? Yes. Christian yes. growth is a blessing. It's a blessing. Amen. Now, the family of God includes all who have believed in him. So you're in a family. Let me explain something to you. I want you to realize something. All the apostles, the prophets, and every faithful follower from the beginning of time that loves the Lord is a part of your family. You got a big family. Got a big family. Don't ever think that you don't have a big family. You got a huge family. Your family is so big you can't even count them. Are you listening, Chuck? Amen. Amen. That means your family are people that from the past who believed in Christ. The present who yeah. believe in Christ. And people who will believe in Christ in the future. That's your family. We're yeah. all of them because we have the same father. Then we're going to make it yeah. We're going to make it easy yeah. for you to understand. It's not hard. Yes. Yeah. The reason why the past, present, future, all the apostles, the prophets, listen, Jesus Christ, we're all one family. We all had the same father. The yeah, same father. So that means yeah. we're all one family. God is the yeah. same all the creation, y'all. Amen. God is the of all creation. You got to realize, and he's the rightful owner of everything. Everything. Amen. And he Amen. offers his love and power to his family in the church. Ephesians uh -huh. 16 and 21. If we want to receive God's blessing, it's important that we stay in contact with other believers in the body of Amen. Christ. See, let me tell you something. Listen to me good. It's hard to say to family. It's hard to say that you love the Lord. When we consistently see you keep walking away. Amen. You should never be going far from church. You should be coming closer to church. Amen. 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 That's Amen. what I tell you about. Listen, do not miss service. Amen. And the reason why is because of the simple fact you're in a family. You're in a family. Amen. Amen. And the more you receive Amen. God's blessing, listen, the more you grow in God, it's more important that you stay in contact with the body of believers. Amen. This is what you have to do. Those Amen. who isolate themselves, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. When a lion goes after prey, he can't catch the whole pack, you know what he does? He catches that one that's trying to catch Amen. You understand? Amen. Yeah. And Satan goes around in the one line, thinking whom he can devour. The easiest Amen. one to devour is the one that's straying from the pack. Straying Amen. from your church. Staying Amen. from the body of Christ. Amen. When you isolate yourself from God's family and try to go it alone, you're going to find out that you're going to be lacking God's power. You Amen. understand? Yes. You know, you need to be around God's people.
Because when you're not around God's people, do you know you're cutting yourself off from the power? Do you not know that? Yes. You got to stay. Yes. Amen. Now, yes. these people, you don't need to go to church to worship God. You are lying. The Bible said, the Bible said, we'll take not to get gathered together. I don't know where you got that from. Well, all I got to do, no, 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 no. There's a corporate anointing that's in the house of God. Amen. There's a corporate anointing. Amen. And those that live within the body of Christ are going to find the blessings of Jesus coming more and more in their home, in their life. You understand? Let me tell you something. Yeah. Don't cut yourself off. Amen. Now, I see somebody sitting there saying this morning, Pastor, I don't believe you just said, I said what I said. Listen, Amen. I know all about our broadcast ministry. You understand? Amen. I know there are people that connect with us everywhere. And I know all of that. But let me tell you what I'm telling you. Those are people that can't make it. You don't have an uh-huh. excuse. Amen. You don't have an excuse. Well, I'm Amen. just going to stay home and I'm going to just listen to the broadcast on the radio. Really? Yes. I'm going to listen to the YouTube channel. Really? Amen. No. No. Uh, Amen. You don't have no excuse. So, so don't even get Amen. that in your mind. I'm just telling somebody just in case you, you know, you might have been thinking about doing that. Forget about it. Amen. All right. Amen. Now, I want to go into God's blessings for a minute. And what ways does God bless us? Now, tomorrow we'll talk about human blessings. But today I want to talk about the ways that God blesses us. Now, I gave you a sample blessing. Where was the sample blessing, Saints? It was in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. Okay, I want to make sure you got that. Now, I'm going on and I want to talk about God's blessings for a minute. And what ways does God bless us? I want you to go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Chapter and verse, Genesis 12, verse 3. Genesis 12, verse 3. Now watch what it says here. Very important. I want to talk about Abraham for a minute. I will bless those that bless you and curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Now I want you to make sure you get write that verse down, Genesis 12 and 3. Mm-hmm. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he called him. He wanted a nation who he could call his own. All right? So he called Abraham from godlessness, self-centeredness, and the self-centered city of earth. It was a fertile region called Canaan. Now listen to me closely. This is a good teacher now. They were a God-centered, he called them from there to a God-centered moral nation that he could establish. So God took Abraham from Ur of Chaldee. Now, I want you to understand something about this place, Ur. It was pagan. Pagan. Very pagan. So God brought him out of there because Abraham wouldn't worship many gods, many idols. He only wanted to worship one God. Now listen to me closely. So this small, even though it was small in dimension, the land of Canaan was the focal point of most of Israel's history, as well as the rise of Christianity. This small land was given to one man. It was Abraham. And he had a tremendous impact on world history. Now, God wanted to establish a people of his own. I want you to realize something. Abraham left Ur of Chaldee. It's a few things I want you to understand about Abraham. Abraham dad sold idols. Abraham dad sold idols. In this place called Ur in Mesopotamia. Now Abraham rejected his father's God and goddesses because he made idols. Abraham's father created and sold idols. Now you may not know this, and I want you to know this. So Abraham believed only in one God. He rejected his father's teaching. He rejected 
his father's idol worship. He rejected it. And Abraham left Ur of Chaldees, Mesopotamia, and Abraham went to Hebron. And this is the plains of Merah. Now, you got to believe something in your spirit, in your mind. When Abraham left, he was a man of faith. He was following God. Let me tell you something. Anytime you follow God, you ain't going to go wrong. Abraham left there and Abraham built another altar. One altar. Abraham made a covenant with God through circumcision. And that's why you see all through the Old Testament, at the age of eight, young men were circumcised because it was a sign of the covenant between God and Abraham. Am mm -hmm. I teaching this morning? I want to make sure you get it. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, he built the altar there. And that altar, right now today, is called the Temple Mount. See, I want you to understand this. I don't want you to just go to church and just hear stuff and buy it, bow your head and say yes. I want you to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Amen. Abraham left Ur of Chaldees. Yes, he, he left mm -hmm. his father, who was the idol maker. He yes. sold idols. Mm -hmm. God led Abraham out of idolatry. Abraham. Mm -hmm left with all his family. Oh, Abraham God. went and built the altar. Today it's called the Temple Mount. The Temple okay. Mount. It's where Abraham built this altar. Amen? Amen. Now, or it may be called Mount Moriah. Okay? Now, so Abraham followed God's and God lived him, and because of Abraham and Abraham's faith, see, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. Uh -huh. He did what God asked him to do. Remember, he took his son all the way up on Mount Moriah and yes. just put him, stab him, graveyard dead, and God provided yes. a, a ram in the bush. Yes. See, See, God will give a ram in the bush to people that are really blessed. And take Amen. Some, it ain't no problem that God can't solve. I want you to hear this clearly. This Amen. Amen. You don't have a problem that God can't solve. Amen. Are you listening? And because of Amen. Abraham's faith, I want you to go back and listen to this message again tonight. It'll be up on YouTube channel. I want you to catch this. Make sure you understand that Abraham did not stagger at every promise that God told him. Everything that God said he would do, he did. He Amen. Did. Amen. Now, watch this. So God promised to bless Abraham and make him great. But there was only one condition. Abraham had to do what God wanted him to do. And I don't know why people don't want to do what God told them to do. But you expect to be Amen. blessed. Amen. Amen. Pastor, he just can't go, just can't do anything my flesh tell me to do. Amen. I can't do anything Amen. just come in my ear. No. That's true. I got to be obedient to God. Amen. And sometimes being obedient to God and leaving his home and his friends and traveling to a new land where God promised to build a great nation from Abraham's family. Abraham had to leave his mind. Let me say something to you, Saint. I had to leave a lot behind. A whole lot. A whole lot of people had to leave behind. Had to go home. Because Amen. God said, This is where I want you to go. This is what I want you to do. Let me explain something to you. When I went to Philadelphia, had a whole lot of people complained. Everybody mad. People leave. But guess what? I still went. Because Amen. let me explain something to you. When God tells me to do something, I don't care what you say. Amen. But what God say? Mm -hmm. And when you look back over it today, you look back over it today, look Amen. what God has done. Look what he's done. Amen. 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 Amen.
I don't know uh, if you really heard what I said. But there was a whole lot of people upset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he ain't coming back. Well, I didn't ever tell you I wasn't coming back. I never told you that. And now, everything is in God's hands and everything is under God's care. Yeah, yeah. See, let me tell you something. When you put your faith in God, everything will work out okay. just like he planned. Yes, what, what, what if God had never went? Amen. Then you wouldn't have this big family of people. You wouldn't have all, you know. Amen. God told me to go, and then God told me to come back. If I didn't come back, you wouldn't have what's going on. Yeah, now. Amen. 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 Be careful how you handle people that are walking with God, that are saints. Amen. Trust in God. Amen. You may not understand it, but it ain't for you to understand. Amen. You just be safe. And God going to bless you. Now, okay. Abraham obeyed. He had to walk away from his home. Didn't I have to do it? I had to do it. I had to do it. Wasn't easy. But Abraham had to do it. I had to do it. Because I realized God had bigger plans for the ministry. Amen. Amen. And you got to realize something. God led us to greater service and usefulness for him. See? Let me tell you something. Amen. I wasn't going to let comfort and security stop me from moving forward with God. Amen. You understand? See, that's what a lot of people today. You know, even you in this church, you ain't going to be so comfortable now. Amen. Understand you got to stretch. You know, we got got to build it. We got to work. We had to work on it. You understand? Yeah, you got, to, you got to build your muscle around here. Amen. We got something Amen. to do. So let me Amen. go on to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1 and 3, and I'm going to leave y'all alone this morning. How we praise God, Ephesians chapter, chapter verse, Ephesians 1, verse 3. How we praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Our spiritual blessings are in heavenly realms. Our spiritual blessings are in heavenly realms. Let me say it again. Our spiritually spiritual blessings are in heavenly realms. Every spiritual blessing is in the heavenly realm. Amen. Because we belong to Christ. We belong to Christ. Mm-hmm. Can anybody take it from us? Amen. See, Jesus is God's greatest blessing that we'll ever have in our life. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. So who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm? It means that Christ, that Christ, through Christ, we have all the benefits of knowing God. Amen. If it wasn't for Christ, we wouldn't even know God. Amen. We wouldn't know God. And he kept on telling the disciples and everybody, if you've seen me, you've seen God. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Let me tell you some of the blessings that you got right now, sister. Let me tell you some blessings you got right now, my brother. Number one, you are chosen for salvation. You get that? Chosen. You've not chosen him, he's chosen you. While you were yet a sinner, Jesus died for you. Yes, he did. You're adopted as his children. You were engrafted in. You are adopted into his family. His true bloodline is the Jews. You understand? He told Abraham, I give you many descendants as the stars in the sky. Those are you and me who are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Let me make sure I explain myself, make it very clear. And he said, I will give you as many descendants as the sand in the desert. I want you to realize something, that sand is his earthly bloodline through the Jews. The stars in heaven are us who are seated with Christ in heavenly places through the blood of Jesus Christ. Saints, don't miss that. Don't miss that. Watch this. So we're adopted 
as his children. So as adopted children, guess what we got? We got forgiveness and insight. We got the gifts of the spirit. We got the power to do God's will. See, all of that came from being adopted. And then you got the hope of living forever with Christ. Oh, my God, I got to stand up and throw my hands in the air. Because, Lord, no matter how tired and how weary and how woe out we get down here, this is not my home. This ain't my home. That you can call it your home. It ain't my home. Because let me tell you something. I got a home on. I, I got a mansion that he's been working on for over 2,000 years, made just for me. Just for Amen. me. Amen. Just Amen. for me. Amen. Listen. Don't get the person attached that you can't make heaven. Oh, I'm going to say it again. Don't get so earthly attached that you can't have Remember, you just passed the baby. You're a pilgrim here. All right? Now, I want you to know that the blessings that we have now is in the heavenly realm. That means that our sister, you ought to be glad that your blessings are in the heavenly realm. Let me tell you why. Because yeah. the blessings that are in the heavenly realm are eternal. They turn in. They're not temporary like the things of this world. Amen. See, when your blessings are stored up, it's in an eternal place, not a temporal place. Okay? Amen. Now, even though you're in a temporal place, you got them heavenly blessings in your life right now. Amen. Yeah. Right now. Okay? So they're from Christ. They're from Christ, from the spiritual realm, not the earthly realm. You know, like 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 the Greek goddess Artemis. You know, mm -hmm. and somebody might say, "Well, Pastor, who's Artemis?" Well, I don't mind telling you who Artemis is. Mm -hmm. Artemis is the sister of the Greek god Apollo. She's the daughter of Zeus in Greek mythology. Okay. Where you got a lot of people today that all they got is a worldly sense. Mm. You know, they want to hunt. They, she, because she was the goddess of the hunt, wild animals. You understand? She was also uh, the goddess of chastity and also the goddess of childbirth. Okay? And she's the daughter of Zeus, the sister of Apollo. And let me tell you something. You might say, well, Pastor, these people don't worship these guys. Yes, they do. They still worship them today. But let me yeah. tell you something. They don't use the name, but they keep up with yeah. it. They keep yeah. up with what they stood for. Yeah. You got some people today that'd rather be out there hunting than to be on the prayer line. Yeah. You got some people listen. That's all they're about. It's sex. Yeah. Oh. Orgy. Yeah. Wilding out. Yeah. They worshiping them. Same pagan gods that they worship back then. Okay? Amen. Let me explain something to you because I, I need to tell you something before I get off the line today. I want you to realize something that the Bible clearly says that an idol is nothing. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about this for a minute. So if the idol is nothing, what in the world is drawing these people? To all of this paganism. But say what it is. Don't say what it is. Behind every single idol, they are worshiping the devil. Amen. 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 Let me say it again. Say it again. Our idol is nothing. And anybody who is worshiping any idol is worshiping the devil unaware. Because oh, if an idol is something, it's the spirit behind that idol. And, and listen, you got to realize something. What keeps drawing them? You know, it's just like people that are, 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 are hooked on drugs. Mm -hmm. People that are hooked on alcohol. Mm -hmm. My daughter called me and said, Daddy, I was coming back from Jamaica. And, and this lady got on the, on the plane. And she was drunk and high. Mm -hmm. And she smacked up sister in the back and the sister knocked her under the chair. Oh, and she said, she told him. She said, if you don't get her off this plane, we're going to catch hell all the way to Jamaica. Oh. She wasn't. Amen. Because 
Yeah, all the way to Jamaica. And she said, Daddy, when I'm coming back from Jamaica, and I look, and Lord and behold, the same woman was back on the plane. She said, I told the people, Daddy, I said, listen, if y'all don't get this woman off this plane, you're going to have to land this plane uh, 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 as soon as you get across the Caribbean Sea. <laughs> because Lord Emerson is a hellraiser. She's on drugs. Amen. She's got a spirit on her. Yes. It's nothing but trouble. She said, yes, yes. Lord, if I had to land a plane in Orlando. Oh, God. You see, yes. I told you. She yes. fell out on the plane, drunk, ran out on the floor. She said, yes. Daddy started calling. They said, This is a nurse on the plane into the nurse on the plane. She said, Daddy, I was sitting there hoping that a, that a doctor or another nurse would take this case. Amen. She said, so I'm sitting there, Daddy. You know, try not to move. And I said, told them what was going to happen. And then somebody come. She said, Daddy, I had to get up and go back there. She said, Daddy, Amen. I did not want to go back there because I already knew who it was. And she said, Lord, Lord, when I got back there, it was her. She was laying on the floor on the airplane, knocked out. Oh my God! And then I went back there. I checked the pulse and everything. And Daddy, listen to me. Just like I told them, they said, "Well, what do you think we should do?" And my daughter said, "Leave us right there." It's a minute. Because she's drunk, she's sleep. She's dead. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all listen to me. Lord have mercy. Don't Amen. you think for one minute that these people are not worshiping the devil unaware? Amen. 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 Yeah. I want you to know that the devil got a hold on a whole lot of people today. Yes, he does. Those spirits are moving like crazy. Yes. Yeah. And I want you to realize something. It's not what you call a blessing. They are what you call under a curse. Mm. I want you to know that we serve a good God. Amen. And our God Amen. take care of us every day of our lives. He's watching over us and he's keeping us because our blessings are seated with Christ in heaven Amen. places. Now I want to hear everybody on the line today, and there's a lot of y'all on here. I want to hear you say God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Come on, y'all, let's do it. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Let me start to praise Him. God, God bless you all. Bless of the Lord. Make you rich and add no sorrow to you. May be blessed in the house, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed coming out. May everything you touch you be just for the glory of God. May God watch over and keep you. And may you. Gracious love smile upon you. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.